Okay, got to admit this one looks scary. Just look at those equations that they give you there. But don't be intimidated. Um, let's take it step by step. So A says, uh, indicate the direction of the electric field and derive an expression for its magnitude. So what I thought to myself was, what is the relationship between these equations, equations for potential and electric field? So one of the things we learned that came to mind is that uh, electric field is the negative derivative of um, potential. And since they gave us equations for potential, that's what we got to do here. We got to take the derivative of these equations. So for part one there, where um, R is less than big R, we're going to have to take the derivative of this equation right here. And again, maybe it looks scary, but most of it is constants. Um, if you multiply the coefficient in the front uh, t into the things that are in the bracket, this is just a number here. So when you multiply these two things together, it's all just going to be a constant. And of course, the derivative of a constant is zero. So I'm just going to eliminate that aspect uh, when I when I do the derivative. So um, so that means that I'm dealing here with uh, little r to the second power. And so when you take the derivative, you're going to multiply uh, the coefficient by that old power. So that's what I'm going to do here. There's a 2, which is the coefficient, and there's a 3 right here. And then there's this coefficient here. So you're going to end up multiplying all those things together. 2 times 3 times this coefficient out here. So what that gives me uh, is 6. Q0 over 4 pi epsilon naught capital R. Uh, then, of course, I'm going to reduce the coefficient by 1, so that just gives me uh, little r to the first power. But don't forget that there was also an r here, uh, which is actually in the parentheses, so it's really an r squared. Uh, and that gets multiplied by the capital R here, which gives you an r cubed. And finally, don't forget that the formula for electric field includes a negative sign. So when we take the derivative, that would be it. That, that would be um, the answer to number one here. And because of that negative sign, what technically that negative sign means is that the electric field is in the opposite direction of the radius. I mean, radius is a vector, electric field is a vector. There's no other real vectors in this uh, uh, equation here. So that means it is radially inward. Uh, likewise, if we do part two, this is an easy one to take the derivative of, take the derivative of that, um, which let me rewrite it. It's q0 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and it's really r to the negative 1. So if you take the derivative of that, well, first you have to multiply by the old exponent, which is negative 1. So that puts a negative sign in front of our answer. And then you have to reduce the exponent by 1. That will give you r to the negative 2. So I'm just going to put it on the bottom as r squared. Uh, then, I don't want to forget the negative sign that's right here, uh, so that gives it another negative sign. Obviously, a double negative is just q0 over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared, and that's a very familiar equation. That's the electric field due to a point or spherical charge, and since it is positive, then uh, that means that uh, the electric field points in the same direction as the radius. So the answer to that is radially outward. Okay. So now what do we have to do next? The following region is the derived expression for the enclosed charge that generates the electric field in that region. So when I saw this, and you can see I circled that word enclosed charge, because that's what my brain keyed in on. And I was thinking how important that expression enclosed charge is in Gauss's law. Plus they talk about electric field. So I figured I should be able to use Gauss's law to answer this question. So let's do that. E A cosine theta equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And of course, we're looking for the Q enclosed. Um, so uh, let's start off with the region that's uh, less than capital R. So we need to substitute in the equation for E. And that's the equation I developed up here. So I'm going to do negative 6Q0R over 4 pi epsilon naught big R cubed. Um, and the A we're talking about, this is all a spherical arrangement of charges. And so your Gaussian surface should be a sphere. And the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. 
cosine theta um, really actually gets taken care of by that negative sign right there. Um, the electric field vector and the area vector are uh, pointing in opposite directions, and so it would give you ultimately a negative answer. So I'll, I'll just leave that negative there and not worry about cosine theta. Um, and we're trying to solve for Q enclosed, and we've got an epsilon naught here. So lots of things that we can simplify. The epsilon naughts cancel out, the fours cancel out, the pi's cancel out, and then this r squared combines with that r. So our final answer is negative six q zero, um, and then we have uh, little r cubed over big R cubed. Um, and that is a formula for the Q enclosed um, at a radius less than capital R. So now let's figure it out the same thing for a radius that's larger than R. So I'm gonna use the same process, EA cosine theta uh, equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Now I'm gonna use the E expression right here that we derive for outside capital R. So Q sub zero equals four pi epsilon naught R squared. And again, we're talking about a, a Gaussian surface that's a sphere, surface area of a sphere is four pi R squared. And uh, so then we have Q enclosed over epsilon naught and uh, tons of st stuff cancels out here. And we get an answer that probably should have been obvious from the first place. And that is that the Q enclosed is just equal to Q sub zero if you're outside of the, the sphere. Uh, outside of capital R. And then here's a question that seems like it's out of less left field. Is there any charge on the surface of the sphere? Like how the heck am I supposed to know that? Well, the fact that the total enclosed charge is positive, but the charge, where is that expression? Here it is. The charge when you're inside this radius here is negative. Whoops, that's not what I was looking for. Where's my, ex oh, here it is right here. <laughs> my expression for uh, the Q enclosed if you're inside capital R is a negative expression. So this is clearly a negative charge, yet when you get completely outside that region, suddenly we have an overall enclosed positive charge. So that implies to me that there has to be, um, let's see, yes, there's gotta be a charge on the surface of the sphere. It's gotta be some positive charge that cancels out all of this stuff in here. Um, and, and guess what? We have to determine that charge. So the way I would do that is to say that we know if we're completely outside of R, the total enclosed charge is just Q zero. And so that me that is made up of the Q on the surface, which is what we're looking for, uh, plus the Q on the inside, which is negative six Q zero. Uh, over r cubed. Now there's a there's a little r cubed uh, in this formula, but um, I want to enclose all of the charge that's in this sphere. So I'm going to put in for little r. I'm going to put in capital R. So so that's totally enclosing the entire um, sphere. And what happens is those r's cancel out, and uh, and then we just have this negative six q zero. And if we solve for the q on the surface, then it means that the Q on the surface has to be equal to um, a positive seven Q zero. And, uh, and hopefully that makes sense in a logical way too. If you have positive seven Q zero on the surface, and then you subtract from that six Q sub zero, which would be at a radius of capital R, um, then you get Q sub zero, which is the charge that we figured out is, is um, the enclosed charge when you're when you're beyond capital R. Okay, last little piece here is we have to make this graph. Well, um, hopefully we're good with outside of the surface here. Um, that's just your typical one over R squared type uh, dropping off that we see from um, this equation right here. The electric field is inversely proportional to r squared and it's positive that's why i put it in the positive section of the graph so to figure out the force in here you know i'm i'm just gonna uh and by the way maybe i should mention that uh to prove that just now i looked at the electric field formula but remember the only difference between electric field and charge is f equals q times e uh and we're and we're dealing with a positive test charge so um, in terms of the shape of the graph, the formula for the force that the charge would experience 
is really just you can get that shape just by looking at the formula for e. I'm going to do the same thing for um, at a radius smaller than capital R. Now our formula for the electric field out there is this formula right here and you can see that in this formula um, the only variable is lowercase r. Uppercase r is not a variable, it's a constant. The only variable is lowercase r. Uh, we have a negative sign because the electric field is negative in that region. And so in that region, um, the electric field is directly proportional to r, but it's negative. And so going back to the graph, direct proportion uh, is a straight line, but it's a straight line in the negative section of the graph. So you have this discontinuity here where the uh, where the positive 7Q charge kicked. All right, hope that made sense.